G'day prospectors, Tony from Gold Talk, Leonora. It's heating up in the gold fields, 43 to 45 today at Celsius, not that, uh, that uh, girl's blouse bloody uh, Fahrenheit nonsense, it's um, hmm, quite warm. Anyway, I just wanted to um, show you something that I think can um, help put you onto gold. And a lot of people come to us and say, Dane, where do I start? Da, 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 da. And it's real easy. You start where uh, other people are finished and you find the fresh runs. Um, going out looking for new country um, is not so much a waste of the time. There might be one in a thousand that actually do it. Um, very few people are set up uh, mentally um, to, to do it. Um, and for most people, when you're just coming out bush for a few weeks of the year at the right time of the year, um, there's easier ways to, to make your weight in the jar. So um, your best reference tool always is Tengraph. Um, people have far too much reliance on Trilobite and other, other programs. Um, Trilobite, Happy Prospector, GeoView even, uh, they are field apps and you use them out in the field, that's great. Uh, but Tengraph is where you do your research. Uh, the main reason is you find all your dead tenements. Um, if you search dead tenements in Tengraph, it'll bring you to all sorts of areas, and here we have one on the ground. Uh, this is a one just outside of Leonora called Gambia Lass. But what I wanted to do was show you how I would approach it, now that I know that there's some old time shafts and a lot of activity in the area, how would I do it? Um, now, first of all, what I'm not talking about is how to access the ground. So I'm just making the assumptions that you've been able to take out a section 40E or all of this was pending or, or what have you. So you just need to take that into account. But the main thing is, the first thing to do is look at the shafts. And I'll just turn Stephen around. And what you can see is uh, one, of the, one of the shafts there where they're framed up. And almost every shaft <laughs> around here is going to be six foot by three foot. All right, so you'll have six foot on the long wall there and you'll have three foot on the short wall over there. And almost always what the old timers will be doing is, and this is where they're chasing stringers and leaders and, 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 and vein quartz, hydrothermal veins. Basically what they're doing is they're sinking their shaft straight over the top of the structure, okay? Uh, sometimes a bit to the left, bit to the right, but basically that's where they're starting off. Um, occasionally where you've got a nice thick seam, maybe, you know, two foot wide, they'll move, um, they'll move their, their shaft to go alongside it so that they can drive into it. Um, but either way, what it does is it tells us straight away what direction the country is running in, as in what way is the structure working. And it's always going to be working lengthwise. Um, me, I've spent a lot of time around shafts and I've got no intention of falling in them. So for me, this one where I've got a degraded collar around it, this is as close as I'm going to get to the little sucker. And even this, you know, I'm sort of pushing my boundaries. But when you have sort of small potholes on the ground that might only be three or four or five foot deep, you can go right up to them, you can look into the short wall at both ends and usually you'll see what um, uh, what structure the old timers were digging on. Okay, so we know that the structure, if you like, the quartz vein that was producing gold is going lengthways. Now if we look out, hello, there's more shafts off in the distance, a little bit of space in between and if we circle around Happy days, there's Uncle Brian, and there's plenty of shafts going off in that direction as well. Okay, so we know the run of the country. Um, the question is, how am I going to use this to find more gold with a metal detector? I'll just jump down there. And it's real simple. Um, particularly when you've got a slope, and again, I'll just turn Stephen around, but we do have a nice gentle slope moving down that way. Okay, and the vast majority of prospectors are going to look for a patch of gold down there, right? Because it's downslope, um, and that's where 
you know, you know that gold will fall off the hill and, and go down there. Um, that's actually the last place I'm going to look. Okay, unless I see any evidence, I might drive through there and if I don't see any uh, sort of massive <laughs> dig holes or anything like that. But that's actually the last place I'm interested in because it's so textbook, it's what they call an eluvial shed, uh, it's so textbook that every man his dog's already been out there sniffing around. Um, and if 3,954,200,803 prospectors have done something before, um, who do I think I am that I'm going to do anything different? And I've got to find gold to live. So, that for me is out. But what is in is following the line of strike, all right, or what I call connecting the dots. All right, I'm not a huge fan of working around shafts. Yes, you'll generally pick up a few little bits, especially where you see the old dry blowings and, and what have you. But again, I'm not chasing 0.2 of a gram a day. I'm chasing bigger gold. So working around the shafts, too much bloody junk for me. But what I like to do is work in between shafts and out on strike. Now, in this case where we've got a shaft here and, and more shafts over there, let's say they're 150 metres apart, something like that, working in between those two shafts could be worthwhile. But what I particularly prefer to do is work out on, on strike. So I connect the dots uh, of the shafts, and in this case, it looks, I mean, there's a couple of different shafts out at the end. I'd want to have a look and see if it's going that way or that way or straight ahead because remember that the quartz is fluid when it was, when it was either pushing up through cracks or whatever it was doing. Um, so it can go in all different sorts of directions. But the general direction out on strike is through there. Okay? And I would be looking anywhere up to a kilometre out in that general direction, out through there. In this way, again, I could have a look down here through the through in amongst the shafts, but bugger that, junk uh, is is not worth my time. So I'd probably nut out the uh, direction of the line of strike, which is the shaft collars are telling me that anyway. But I'd have a look at a few of the the shafts themselves and say, yep, is it going that way? Is it going that way? And depending on where it is, let's say it was shooting over that way a bit. I would actually be working out on line, uh, again, one, two kilometres. And in this case, if you go out a lot further, you'll start picking up more shafts. So where I've got a nice big distance in between, that's the kind of ground that I'm looking to, to, to fill in. The problem that you've got always with uh, prospecting, and remember, we're prospecting, we're not mining. The difference is quite simple. If you're mining then you know what's there. You've done the drilling, you've done the resource definition, and away you go. Us scaly old prospectors, we have no idea. So what we're doing is we're going in and we're looking to see what's there. And that's what we've got to do in this situation. Um, we need to prospect, which also means we need to be prepared to go without. That's the nature of the beast. Way out in that direction, and if there was other shafts there that I could connect up the dots with, I would work out that way for kilometres, okay? I don't care what's around me, I don't care what the geology is, I don't care what it looks like. If I can just pick up that line, that's where I'll be working for a long time. Prospecting means you've got to be prepared to go without, okay? That's the, that's the hard part of prospecting, that's the mental game. But working through there would be a bloody good place to be, to be started. Now I also know that going that way probably for the next 10 kilometres there's patches of gold. Okay, now whether they're related to this particular structure is not really the point. But the key to all this is, is to put yourself in the right areas. To put yourself where you've got a chance of finding gold. All right? Connecting the dots between these lines of shafts. And it may be one shaft, just one out in the middle of bloody nowhere but you have a look where the long wall and the short wall is and that will tell you rather than walking on the long wall walk on the short wall walk out several hundred meters on both sides and seeing if you can pick up another pod that's the that's the key to it there's reasons why the gold can be there and at this stage it doesn't really matter 
just believe me when I say it can be worth your time to do it. It's good prospecting. Okay. Um, I hope that's been of some help. Connect the dots in prospecting. Look at Tengraph. Find out where the uh, old tenements are. That'll tell you where all the old shafts are. Get out there and do something different. Rather than walking downslope, walk across out on the line of strike. See you prospectors.